Hey, what's up, guys? This is Los and Anthony with the Malco Cast. Thank you guys for joining us today. It's been a while, and uh, we thank you for coming back to the Malco Cast. Today, we are talking about a topic that is creating a lot of conversation online and in band rehearsal rooms and in concert <laughs> venues. And it is kind of a, kind of a of a crazy topic, and that topic is musicians who are playing live shows who rely on backing tracks and backing vocals <laughs> wow uh anthony has an opinion about that i, have I do an have an opinion, opinion about that um i th yeah i'm interested to know your opinion but i do have an opinion about that uh yes it has been a while since we have done one of these um uh, sorry guys it has been a while yeah um graduation season is here and you know graduation season man yeah for sure and, and um yeah i mean doing this we do this out of love because we like talking to you guys and we like sharing with you guys our thoughts and stuff like that and so we really appreciate it when you guys uh come and listen to us and and most of all when you guys subscribe because by subscribing and dropping comments and dropping likes you're letting us know that that you like what we're doing and it motivates us to keep doing it. So if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, please, make please sure do. That, yeah, please make sure you do. We <laughs> would so appreciate that. Um, so this whole topic um, came up recently because ex kiss member Ace Freely <laughs> yeah. Yeah. actually called his band out for using backing vocals during their live performances <laughs> wow and um how do you how do you feel like uh, dude i'm kind of up in the air about how i feel about this a little bit i understand but i don't like the idea of it i, I think you lose authenticity obviously you lose authenticity of the performance dude like oh absolutely because everybody sounds perfect, you know, like, um, but then at the same time, if you're the ticket goer and you're dropping how much money on these goddamn tickets, it's hundreds, you don't want to be cheated, right? <laughs> like, <laughs> so I hate it, dude. I hate the, the fakeness of it. You, I do too, and I've always kind of liked my music a little bit dirty. I don't like it pristine. You know, I right. like it to have, you know, little squeals and, and little dynamics. You know, I, I, I like my music a little bit dirty and, and nasty like that. And uh, when you, you know, pop in a CD or you listen to a Spotify, you always hear like the best version of the the song, which is a studio produced song with multiple layers of guitars multiple layers of drums and bass and all of that stuff and so you're hearing the best version of the song right but when right. you go live you don't expect to hear that studio version of the song you expect to hear the song but as, yeah but do people expect to hear that do people in this day and age expect to hear what they're paying for it, dude like what they heard on the radio like because that's the only reason you do a backing track well, is if you it, think the, the crowd expects that right yeah it would seem that it is moving more towards that because like you said the t the cost of tickets not only that but the cost of parking the cost of beer and the cost of you know whatever you eat concessions you, you know yes. concessions it all adds up you know and if if the band is like for example, like I know that Vince Neil always gets a lot of flack for, you know, getting drunk and barely able to be singing his songs and stuff. It's I like, don't know if he gets shit for being drunk. I, I, I I'll correct you on that. I think it's just because he's out of shape, dude. To yeah. be honest, with you. <laughs> he's yeah. out of shape. Yeah, he's he's out of shape, and he can't hit those notes anymore. So if I'm paying all that money to see like a Vince Neil and he performs the way he has been performing. I'm not saying he performs like that all the time, but I've seen stories where people have just been like, damn, how far he has fallen. Like, what's going on with him? You know, and, and for a band as big as Kiss, though, for them to be using backing vocals, it's like, 
yeah they're getting older they're getting up there and they might not be able to sing uh, the way they used to sing and they might not have the stamina to move around and sing at the same time, you know. And then so, quit. <laughs> then yeah. quit already. Damn they it. should. You know, like... They should. I don't like Kiss, to be honest with you. I don't like Kiss either. I so don't quit like already. Kiss. Uh, it's, <laughs> like... it's away from our generation. Um, but I but just... you also got uh, the DJ or the uh, sample guy from Deftones, you know, talking about this uh, right. this subject too. Yeah, and he he came out. And he was kind of uh, um, agreeing with us, basically. Right. He was saying that, um, you know, everybody strives for that perfect live show. But when he when he and the Deftones do the live show, they want to have, like, a little bit of grungy, grunginess to the performance. The rough edges, dude. The rough edges, the grittiness. Um, yes. And, you know. <laughs> I and think- I agree with that because I, I believe sometimes you... you not every band is always on their A game, dude. And you, you know, like, yeah. and I, I think in entertainment, in the entertainment industry now, creativity has been lost, dude. Like, there, there's the human element has been taken out of it, dude. And everybody wants it to be every every performance to be a one, dude. And it just I don't know. Like I went and saw Thrice a couple years ago uh, in San Francisco, and they totally butchered the first part of their song. And their singer Dustin Kensrue, he chuckled in the microphone, uh. and I loved it, dude, because it was it had the human element, you know. Like, and we're losing that in the entertainment industry, the human element, the uh, the mess ups, dude, because sometimes mess ups lead end up leading to great performances. You know, yeah. I think it makes it makes them more likable because nobody likes somebody who's a hundred percent perfect. I mean, Kurt Kurt Hammett uh, um, was playing "Nothing Else Matters" recently at a live show, and uh, he flubbed the intro of it, and he just kind of laughed it off. But you know. I it happens, it, dude. It, it, yeah, it, it, it surely does. I mean, as a musician, though, when you're playing a live show and you mess up, do you stop and laugh or do you keep going and hope that nobody I, <laughs> nobody notices? I keep you? going and laugh, dude. <laughs> I, 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 I correct myself and I keep going and laugh, dude. Like, if you ever see me laughing, more often than not, it's because I messed up. You know, like, so... <laughs> so has anybody yeah. ever come up to you and said damn it anthony why did you mess up on this part of the song dude i'm sure they have because oh man that was my favorite part and you totally just butchered it yeah yeah i'm sure yeah it's i'm sure it's happened <laughs> um yeah, there have been times and i've been uh, on stage and i've messed up my lyrics and i i'm the worst critic my own worst critic and i beat myself up for that Luckily, I'm not a, you know, nobody's listening to my music. Um, yeah, everybody nobody's listening to my either. <laughs> and, the kiss, and they, they know when you when you mess up. You know, uh, yeah. who else was saying, uh, calling out another person uh, in the rock wrestling world, Sebastian Bach was calling out uh, Chris Jericho from Fozzy <coughs> and saying that he heavily uses backing vocals in his band. And Chris Jericho was like, so what? Everybody does, unless you're Guns N' Roses, unless you're in Slash's band. Uh, everybody uses them, and then they've just kind of been beefing and feuding and stuff. And But you I, know what, dude? They've been feuding forever, dude, and it's just like, I don't know. They both look like they need, like, Geritol or something. I don't know. They need, like, to, they need to smoke they're, uh, they're, they're just, yeah. <laughs> like, they they've been feuding the first pipe. Yeah, they've been feuding over everything for a long time now, and it, it's pretty comical. Um, I don't know. I just I'm not about backing tracks, um, but I I understand the the need for them. One, it is, for a lot of bands, it is a timing thing, dude. But man, it's like yeah. I'm not gonna hate a band if they use a, a, a backing track. I'm, I'm, I just won't. You know, I'll still enjoy myself. What I hate is when studio musicians, 
will like use auto tune in their singing. I hate that more than I hate anything else. And I wish that's a tr I wish that was a trend, especially in pop music, that would go away. You can thank Cher for that. <laughs> uh, yeah, T Pain for that too. <laughs> well, Cher was the, uh, from my re remembrance. Uh, Cher was the first that I ever heard do that. I shit. would not be surprised in any way. <laughs> but, but anyways, guys, we're here at the ten minute mark, and we want to know in the comments what you guys think of this. Is it a deal breaker for a musician to use a backing vocal or a backing track in a live performance? Yeah, does it even, does it even matter? Does it to even you? matter? Yeah. Yeah. We want to know in the comments, and um, yeah, thank you very much for joining us on today's episode of the Malco Cast. We will catch you next time. Peace. More frequently. <laughs>